Welcome to video 10 in an introductory series of videos for SOLIDCAM. This video's topic is 3D milling. So the 3D milling toolpath is a three-dimensional pocketing toolpath. That's really the best way to describe it because even though you're looking at the entire target and you're using uh, three-dimensional features like uh, you know, you're looking at tapers and you're leaving scallops and that behind, it's really going to look more like you're programming it as a pocket. If you review video five for how to do a 2D pocket, 3D milling will make sense in terms of three-dimensional pocket. So let's take a look at that. So I'm just gonna go to add milling operation. I'll go to 3D milling. And if you're watching these videos in, a, in the series as intended, then you just came out of video nine for 3D eye machining. 3D milling is the precursor to 3D eye machining. So 3D milling actually does almost the same thing, but without the eye machining fees and speed. So another way to look at how this toolpath works. So for 3D milling, again, as a 3D recognition toolpath, we're looking at the target as the geometry. For the working area in 3D milling, it's actually required. We want to add a working area. So we'll say working area define. And for the working area, all we want to do is just add a definition of the area we want to work within. So if I want to do the entire part, I'll just choose the top edge of my stock. So I'll just choose the top edge and say constant Z. And this is basically telling SolidCam, everything inside that purple rectangle is what I want machined. If I want to limit the travel to anywhere else, I would just choose that chain geometry. If I say want to do just everything outside the part, but inside of that edge there, just let's say if I chose that contour there, then it would machine everything it finds in between. You basically make a donut shape working area. So you can chain this the same way you chain pockets. Just keep in mind that the outermost chain is what you're working inside of. So we're basically saying machine everything it finds inside of that sketch. And working areas actually can be defined further by what type of working area. So in this menu, we see internal, external, center, and tangent. What that really means is external means I'm only going to machine what I find inside the rectangle, but I can reposition outside the rectangle. So this is kind of for our situation here where I want to make sure I machine everything of this part, even the outside of the stock, but I don't need it to look anywhere else other than inside of that rectangle. So only machine what it finds inside that rectangle. If I had this set to internal, then I machine and reposition only inside of the sketch. So this is useful if, let's say, I needed to stay completely inside the walls of my sketch. Uh, let's say, for instance, again, this sketch here, if I had only the two lines on the opposite sides set as my walls, and I had an oversized sketch uh, allowing me to travel inside here, I could use that sketch to machine inside the jaw faces. That way I'm not crossing those lines, I'm not engaging anything on the other side of that line. So internal is useful if you're trying to limit the travel of the tool completely. But if there's something about your part where you want it to machine inside the rectangle, but it kind of can wander outside a little bit, then you can use things like center. Center allows the center of the tool to get to the edge of the line. So instead of being completely inside the rectangle, I can say the center of the tool can reach just those lines there. And that could mean the difference between tool leaving behind a cusp at a corner or going right to this corner and having the center of the tool sitting right on that point. And then even further with that idea is tangent. Basically allows the tool to wander a little bit outside as long as it stays tangent to that line. And then even further to that, there's a modifier of the offset value. So if I'm saying to stay inside that, that edge there, well, maybe that's the only geometry I have on screen. Maybe I want to expand my working area a little bit. I can just expand it with this offset value. Well, let's just say we use the one that I defined there. I'll click OK, and I'll go select my tool. In this case, we'll stick with tool 21, which is a one-inch tool. Let's go to levels. Again, I'll set it to the top of the stock. And lower level, I'm actually going to choose the top of my vise. That way I can machine everything I can between those two Z levels. In a recognition toolpath like this one, what you're telling SolidCam in this window is that you want to machine everything it finds of the target between those two Z levels. So recognize everything in between those two Z levels. Under technology, this window has a little bit of a different layout, but it's still the same sort of stuff you would choose in the pocketing toolpath like we saw in video five. So for roughing, I'm going to say yes, we'll either do a hatch or a contour. In our case, maybe contour is the best option. As soon as I choose whatever technology from that menu, I have my overlap, my step down, Let's say we do a step down of a half inch. And if there's any flats, which there are, I can say do the flats during the roughing or after. 
difference here is really if you do after, it's just going to do all the prismatic edges. It's going to do any kind of uh, tapers and all that. And then it'll come back and do any horizontal faces. If I do it during, I might actually clear enough material so that I can go deeper with my tool or avoid any kind of collisions. So I'm just going to go to flat during. I'll leave 10 thou on the walls and the floor. My Z entry, I have the same options I did in the pocketing tool path. My mode, I can either do pocket or profile. I can say approach from the outside of an open pocket. Essentially, all the same options you found in the pocketing tool path are found here. They're just laid out a little differently. And because I chose contour, I get my contour parameters in this window here. So I can say start from the outside if I want to. I can change the corners of, of internal to the tool path. I can change the direction of cutting. Everything we saw when we were doing pocketing. This also has the ability to give you some semi-finishing options and finishing options. But again, it is mainly a roughing tool path. So when you use these, you're really just looking at the vertical walls and the, um, the flat areas. It's kind of like just a prismatic finishing. So with all that engaged, let's do a save and calculate. So with that one inch tool, you can take a look at it. If we take a look at it from the top view, it almost looks like it's a pocketing tool path. But the difference with that is it's actually recognizing all the flats. It recognizes the material on the outside and so forth. So all of that has been machined with a one inch tool. Obviously the one inch tool can't fit in some of these corners. So I'm actually going to open this back up, do a save and copy, and I'll change my tool to the half inch tool. Similar to what we saw with the pocketing tool path, if I say just change the tool and recalculate, this thing's going to redo the entire pocket, the entire target all over again. So if I go to the technology section, I'll actually change it to a rest operation. And then we get this data button here, and I could put in the same information we saw with the with the previous uh, with video five with pocketing. I'll say the previous tool diameter was one inch, wall offset was ten thou. Click OK and recalculate. This will automatically be generated as a rest operation. This half inch tool is just going to go back and do what the previous tool cannot do. As we see there, it's really just doing all the corners there. In this case though, I don't really need to worry about these corners out here, so I'll go back in there and I can even change the working area. So I just unclick it, click it back on, so I'm uh, reinitializing it. I'll come back in here and I'll just choose that edge right there, turn on my constant Z. I'm only really concerned with doing rest milling in there anyway, so I've changed the tool, I've changed the working area, I've set it to rest, I'll just get this to recalculate, and it'll only focus on the internal area. So just doing those corners. And you can keep doing a save and calculate with it set to rest, and you keep stepping down the tool to get further and further into the corners there. Any questions on this or anything else from SolidCam, you can always give us a call at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. You can send us your questions and your parts via the ticket system at SolidCamSupport.com. And stay tuned for the rest of the videos in this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.